Well, hello there. Welcome in. Today I'm going to be sharing tips and tricks that I've learned along the way for doing a gorgeous one and done eyeshadow look. If you're new here, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50 where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. I hope you'll consider subscribing while you're here and don't forget to click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you're interested in more makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman, stop by prettyover50.com. There's a lot more great information just waiting for you there. I've kind of fallen in love with the whole one and done eye look concept lately because it is so easy and so gorgeous. It's a beautiful combination between something that you can put together in just a couple of minutes and that looks terrific for daytime or evening. I have learned a few tricks that have been helpful for me to make my one and done eyeshadow look a little bit better on my more mature eyes. Those of us who are a little bit older have specific issues with how to place color on our eyelids so that it enhances the way we look instead of dragging our eyes down and ultimately our face down. There's just a lot of changes that happen when we get a little bit older with the texture on our eyelids, with the composition, in other words, how low our eyelids hang down, particularly right here in the crease. And I'll be sharing today some little tips and tricks that I've learned to make it look as good as it can. I'm finding that I'm really drawn to a one and done eye look lately because of the simplicity and just the elegance of the looks. So I'm going to be walking through all those steps today and sharing with you what I've learned that you might be able to apply to your own one and done eyeshadow look. As always, all products that I use and mention today will be listed and linked below and they'll also be over on the blog so super easy for you to find. And with that, let's hop into it. So before we get started, can we talk about my shirt? <laughs> it's all white and spring-like because it's all springy outside and I just wanted to wear something a little bit lighter and brighter. I don't know what the temperature is or the weather is where you live, but here it's really, really ramping up to spring and then into summer. I actually pulled this top out. I got this top when I very first started my traveling adventure. I traveled full time for two years and I picked this up in Cancun. So it just feels really, really good to wear something that I bought in such a sunny beachside climate. All right, let's hop into the makeup. And I have done my base, which is my foundation and my concealer. Where I want to start today is with the whole eye area and the first thing I'm going to do is put on some eyeshadow primer. Today I'm going to be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow primer. This is a high-end makeup product but it's not expensive. This little tube I think is around $15 on the Sephora site. It's the little mini tube or sample tube. I'm not sure how they define it. It's only $15 and by golly you would be hard pressed to use this in six months. You need so very little. I'm going to go ahead and prime my eyes and this amount on my finger right here, this is almost too much. It's probably going to be too much. So you just need the tiniest amount, particularly because this formula is thicker and more opaque than a lot of other eyeshadow primers. So what I do is I just tap it in between two fingers and I tap it over my lids. What I want to point out is that I am doing this before I work on my eyebrows because I want it to be setting down and drying while I'm working on my eyebrows. So when I move forward with my eyeshadow, it's going to be nice and dry and set. So I'm just going to continue to tap that in until it's really worked in. And with this formula, such a little bit goes such a long way that I find out the more that I blend it in, the better result I get. I always like to do my eyebrows before I do my eyeshadow because it kind of creates the frame for my eyeshadow and it provides me boundaries to work within when I'm placing my eyeshadow. I do have a few tips that I want to share with my brows today that I've learned that help my face and my eye area in particular look more lifted. On my face, my brows in the front area are fairly thick and fairly full. But you can see on the side right here, it's almost bald and it's that way on both sides. So I definitely need to adjust my eyebrow application to compensate for that area that doesn't really have any brow to it. The way that I start with my eyebrows is I start at the very bottom and I just start defining that bottom edge. So very soft, light strokes. I just want to give my brows some definition in that bottom area. Once I have that filled in, then I'm just going to start filling in little areas throughout my brow that might need a little bit more color. 
As I do that, I'm going to go ahead and flip the eyebrow pencil around, and most of them have a spoolie on the other end, and I'm just going to make sure that that is worked into those brow hairs. Once I have that brow filled in fairly well, I'm going to start working on that tail area. What I have learned with my more mature eyes is that bringing the tail down like I did when I was younger does not serve me. It just drags my eye down because this area, the skin in this area, is so heavy. I have found that pulling the eyebrow out more in a horizontal direction makes my eyes look a little bit more lifted and a little bit more wide awake. So I'm going to start right at that area where the brow hairs start getting a little sparse and I'm just going to pull that out more to the side to give my eyes a little bit more of an open look. So you can see how that's more out horizontally than down vertically. Another trick that I've learned with my brows is that I always touch them up when I'm completely done with my makeup application because often I'll have disturbed the eyebrow pencil putting on my powders or my foundation or something. So I always check them at the very end of my makeup application to make sure that they're exactly how I want them to be. You can see again on this side I've pulled that brow out in a horizontal direction more than a vertical direction so that it really does serve to lift and open up that eye area. Now let's jump into the actual eyeshadow application and the areas of my eyes that I want to point out that maybe you have as well make the application a little bit different than when I was younger. First of all this area right here which you could call a hooded lid is a lot heavier than it was when I was younger. It falls in a much different position than it did in my 20s and 30s, so I have to treat it differently. In addition, raising my eyebrows when I'm applying my eyeshadow can be a dicey proposition, and I really have to pay attention to what I'm doing. And let me give you an example. I'm going to take that same eyebrow pencil and show you how I need to be a little bit more careful with my shadow application so it lifts my eye instead of drags it down. So I'm going to lift my eyebrows and take that pencil and put a little dot right here which would look like it's right in the appropriate eyeshadow area. Watch what happens when I let my eyebrows down. See how that just falls way down? It ends up outside of the area where I would want eyeshadow because that skin moves so much based on <laughs> how my eyebrows are placed. So that's one of the things that I've learned that I have to place my shadow with my eyebrows natural and then I can lift them and start working the areas in once I know where that eyeshadow should go. Ideally, I like to place my shadow in between the corner of my eye and the end of my brow. That's gonna provide the most lift and the most attractive eyeshadow application area. Today I'm using the Stone Cold Fox palette and the reason that I absolutely just went right for this palette when I thought about this video is because there's so many perfect colors in here for a one and done eyeshadow look. Truly, I feel like I could do one and done eyeshadow looks with this for six months and have a different fun look almost every day depending on how I apply it. I'm gonna be using two brushes today, one to apply the eyeshadow and one to blend out the eyeshadow. I have found that using good brushes is so important with my more mature lids. These brushes are from BK Beauty and I'll have them listed down below. However, if you'd like a drugstore option, what I can tell you from my experience is that the Perfusion brushes are really, really excellent. And I'll have a little kit or some brushes listed down below. I do have the Perfusion brushes. I pretty much use my BK Beauty brushes right now. This one is the 202 brush. This is what I'm going to apply the eyeshadow with. This one is the 201 brush. This is the one that I'm going to blend the shadow with. The shadow I'm going to use today is right down in the corner and it is called Play It Cool. I'm going to take that 202 brush and you can see how it's kind of tipped out there at the very end. It comes to a more pointed tip. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap my brush into that shadow and just get pigment right on the tip of that brush. Tap it off. What you want to keep in mind when you're using brushes for any kind of application, whether it's eyeshadow or blush or bronzer, is that where you place your brush first is where the most pigment is going to go. With my eyeshadow looks, I like the most pigment to be here at the outside corner 
towards the bottom of my natural crease and the outside edge of my movable lid, that's going to give me more depth and length to my eye by having that area be emphasized. So I'm going to take that brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it in the area where I want the most pigment and that's going to be right here. So I'm just going to start tapping that right there and working that color in. And you can see I'm just keeping it right to the outside edge of my eye and working it in so that it really, really sets into that eyeshadow primer. So you can see I have a very deep application of that color laid down right here. And because I left my eyebrows down, I didn't lift my eyebrows. That area stays right in that border where I want to keep my eyeshadow and it doesn't come down and drag my eye down. Now I'm going to take that brush and lift my brow because I have it placed towards the outside edge. And I'm just going to start working that in to the crease and bringing it along. And you can see as I move my brush forward, that really is going to shear out that color and bring it along my crease in a beautiful way with the emphasis towards the outside of my eye and it's a little bit lighter and fresher towards the inside. Here's a little trick. If you feel like you've gotten the shadow down too far and it's dragging your eye down, you can just take a little Q-tip right like this, place it at the outside corner of your eye and drag it right on up to the end of your brow. And you can see how that really cleaned up that area. Now when I go back in to blend it in, I can smooth those edges out really easily. So I'm gonna keep blending that shadow over to the inside corner of my eye. And one thing that I wanna do is I want to bring that shadow up almost underneath my brow. And when I'm working on my eyeshadow, oftentimes it can seem like I'm getting that shadow too high, but because of that hooded lid area, I have a lot of real estate up here from the natural crease to my eyebrow. So I have plenty of area to blend that shadow in and then I can highlight right under my brow. What that does is that makes it look like I have more depth and real estate in my eyelid by bringing that shadow up a little bit higher. If I was to stop the shadow right here and highlight this whole area, it brings that whole area forward, making my eyes look a little bit heavier. When I do it this way, it actually sends that area back because dark colors make areas recede and it makes my eyes look like I have more depth and more of a natural crease than a hooded crease. So I'm just gonna take that shadow and work it almost right underneath my brow. So now that I have that worked underneath my brow, I'm gonna take that same brush and I probably don't need to add any more pigment to it. I'm just gonna use the pigment that's already on the brush and I'm gonna take it down to my lid and just start working that color across to my lid towards the inside corner of my eye. And you can see as you shear that shadow out, it almost looks like a different color. Because the majority of the pigment is right here in the corner, as you shear it out, it gives a nice depth and gradation to your eyelid. Now that I have that shadow placed on my lid, I'm gonna go ahead and take my fluffy blending brush, and I'm just going to blend it out across my eyelid, really making sure that all the edges are really soft and everything looks very, very smooth and a beautiful transition. So I'm just going to smooth out those edges and bring that color in towards the inside of my eye. So you can see here how the shadow looks across my eyelid. And that's just with one color and it's so quick and easy to do. Now I want to show you a little trick that I've learned to do that has really helped my eyes look more wide awake and more open. You absolutely don't have to do this, but you might find that you like it on some days when you do a quick one and done and you want your eyes to just look a little bit more open and a little bit more wide awake. I use the Sigma Essential Palettes for this step and I really like this one color that's in here, it's called Snow. What I do is I take a little flat eyeshadow brush and this one is from Perfusion and I just tap it really lightly in here, get a little bit of product on my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that 
right underneath my eyebrow, just in the softest way, just at the very top of my brow, and really, really softly. And you can see that that just brightened that area and lifted that brow up a little bit. Now I'm going to get a little bit more product on my brush, just a tiniest little bit. And where I'm going to place it is right here in the inside corner of my eye. Because my eyes are more hooded and there's more nooks and crannies now, I can get some very deep shadows in this area. And I find by adding a lighter, brighter color, it really opens up that eye area. So I'm going to take that brush with a little bit of product on it, and I'm just going to place it right here at the inside corner of my eye, down towards the inside corner of my tear duct area, and blend that in really really well. I really look at this as contouring more than eyeshadow application and you can see right here the difference in how open my eye looks here compared to here. It does just brighten that area up and makes it look a little less cavernous. The last thing that I do, and again this is absolutely optional, is I get a little bit of that snow on the tip of my brush and I'm going to run it right underneath my lower lashes. Now I don't put any mascara or any color on my lower lashes because I don't want to emphasize that area because it's crinkly and wrinkly. I want the focus to be on the upper part of my eye and the lifting of that area. But right down here adding a little brightness really does help my eye look a little bit more open and a little bit more wide awake. All right I'm going to jump off now do the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. Here we have the finished makeup look and you can see the shadow on my lids. I finished off my eyes with an eyeliner pencil called Smoky Crystal from Essence and then for my eyelashes I used my <laughs> current eyelash love. This is the Maybelline Sky High Mascara. I hope you found this one and done eyeshadow tutorial helpful. I know it is so fun to find an easy, quick, really beautiful makeup look that you can do in just a couple of minutes and be out the door. I hope you found these tips and tricks for doing a one and done eyeshadow look helpful and useful. I know it is so fun to find a new makeup trick that gets you out of the door so much quicker and I really am enjoying the versatility and just the ease of putting together a one and done look. I think it's extremely elegant, very wearable, daytime, evening. It's just a fun way to work with eyeshadow and give your eyes that polished look. If you found this fun, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you're interested in more makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50, over 60 woman, stop by prettyover50.com. There's a lot more great information just waiting for you there. You guys know it just tickles me when you take a few minutes out of your day to spend it with me. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. Again, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. Make it a great day. Wear your sunscreen and all. See you in the next video. Bye now.